The older we get, the more common it is to see people, especially when they get into their 40s, into their 50s, slack on their health. As a result of this, you may see people, you may even be one of these people yourself, and that's not a diss. Skinny legs, skinny arms, or maybe even decent shape in the arms, but your stomach is just sticking out. And it's quite solid. You may even have a resemblance of abs, but there's something which most people refer to as a pot belly, as a beer belly, as a computer belly. But essentially, it's quite damaging to your health. Having high levels of visceral fat, of internal fat around your organs is pushing your stomach out. And it may appear quite solid, but it's quite deadly. Literally quite deadly. For cardiovascular disease, for your heart disease as we say, for high cholesterol levels. And people are dying left, right and centre. Who have a lot less than most people have around their midsection. There are things you can do though. This isn't a doom and gloom video. There are eight things that I've got here for you that can help you. It can really help you with lowering that belly fat. The first one is lowering your alcohol levels, your alcohol intake. Alcohol is this thing that people rely on because they think they need it to chill. Notice here I'm saying lower not completely cut this out. What is important to realize is that alcohol is seven calories per gram. And your body needs to burn these calories before it can then do the work burning the energy from protein, fats and carbohydrates that it gets. Your body doesn't actually get energy from these calories. They're just there, essentially dead, empty calories. It actually causes a lot of stress having to burn these calories. So lowering your alcohol intake is going to help. If you feel you have to have a drink every night just to relax, maybe we need to talk a little bit about stress control, about mindset, about focusing on why you are drinking, why you are turning to this sedative to get away from the real world. But that's another story. Number two. Increase your protein. A lot of people can easily get their carbohydrates in and their fat levels in. But their protein? Protein is great. It's going to help you with staying fuller, more satiated for longer. It's also going to help you recover from any workouts or anything like that. Because you're fuller for longer, it's going to stop you from diving into that biscuit barrel. From getting those cookies. From going into the candy jar very helpful for allowing you to lower your calories a bit. The third thing, I've just touched on it with alcohol, stress levels. The world we live in is full of stress. From your job, relationships, your family, your financial, even that reflection you see in the mirror can stress you out. Learning to meditate, learning to manage your stress levels with something like headspace, even journaling or just going for a walk can help. I've had clients lose 10 pounds in six weeks, not by counting calories, simply by managing stress and taking a bit of ownership. It works. The fourth one is lowering your processed sugar intake. That's not to say you can't have that cookie. Put the cookie down! Not to say you can't do that. Just be aware of the amount you're having. If 80% of your calories from carbohydrates are coming from processed sugar, your body is not going to like that. Yes, a calorie is a calorie to a certain degree. Quality of food is going to matter with the amount of nutrients you get in there. The 80-20% 80-20 rule. 80% of your food is coming from really high quality foods and 20% can be from that cookie if you require and you really want it. But try not to have it the other way around where 20% is good, 80% is quote unquote bad foods. The fifth one, sort your intolerances out. I've seen so many people think that they're intolerant or they're allergic to gluten. Most allergies will result in an anaphylactic shock. You have to have your pen there and then you have to go to, it could be very, very severe, could end up killing you. 
celiac disease does exist. It doesn't affect the amount of people that we think it does. However, sensitivities and intolerances do exist as well. These could be certain things like you bloat a little bit or you put on some weight by eating a certain food and it takes four or five days for that water retention to go down because it's had a reaction in your body causing some inflammation. Most people though, I will tell you this, are not intolerant to gluten. It's not the gluten that's caused the issue, the bloat. It's simply you are full because you've eaten a whole loaf of bread. And have that on for free. Number six, weight training. Three to four weight training sessions a day. No, ladies, you will not get too big and start turning into the incredible She-Hulk. Guys, as well, you're not going to get too big. But what's going to happen, there's going to be something called EPOC, post-exercise, or excess post-exercise oxygen consumption. Meaning you're going to burn calories afterwards. Your body is always going to be more robust as well. You're going to lay down muscle tissue. Now, people are going to say... It's going to increase your basal metabolic, your resting metabolic rate. It's very minimal, so I'm not even going to put that as a benefit. It does do it, but like 2% or something. But your body is going to be able to function better with stronger, with more muscle mass, going to be stronger, and you are going to be able to thrive more, deal with stress better. Some people go and spend hours and hours on the treadmill, they'll go out for a long run. And I've seen this a lot given my history in endurance athletes, what happens is they just shrink down. The body is actually very, very intelligent for most people. It shrinks. It burns muscle mass because it is heavy. So when you're running, it doesn't want to have that muscle mass there. So it looks to burn it. Keep your protein up and get your strength training in to maintain or increase your muscle mass. The seventh one is neglected a lot. Restful sleep. We pretty much all have on-demand TV, meaning not many people will watch TV live like they used to. In fact, it's quite annoying now when you get to the commercial breaks and you can't fast forward it. Like, why won't this fast forward? Why won't this fast forward? This is actually a bit of a bad one because it then tends to make people watch TV late. You can pause it, you can watch it another day. You don't have to stay up watching First Dates or Love Island or any of these BS programs. They really don't add to your life, but that's another story and a matter of opinion. You don't have to stay up watching these programs. Getting an evening routine, switching off blue light, getting some blue light filtering glasses, it's gonna help your brain switch off going to help you get into a more restful sleep. Studies have actually shown that if you have six hours or less sleep for around two weeks, you're going to lower your testosterone levels by about 15%. Take into account a healthy individual over 30, their testosterone levels lower about a percent every year. So you are aging yourself about 15 years purely by lowering the amount of sleep you have, let alone getting bad quality sleep. It's a no-brainer. Sleep is sexy. Maybe have sex before sleep, you'll get into a better sleep. Who knows? It's worth trying, right? Experiment. The eighth one is just to increase your fiber. Get your vegetables in, your green veg. Why? It's gonna help your body function. Getting real food in your body, getting the fiber in there is gonna make it do its job. I liken this to someone who hasn't ridden a bicycle for about 15 years. They can remember how to do it. They can feel how it should be done, but when they get on there, they're not quite as balanced as they used to be. Maybe fall off, maybe don't know when to change gear. They have to remember how to do it. So taking the fiber away, taking real foods away from your body, your digestion then has to reboot and remember how to actually digest foods properly. It's a little bit like that. But fiber is gonna keep you fuller for longer. It's going to help your body with the nutrient delivery. It's going to help your body get rid of waste, less toxins in the body. All these things add up to lowering stress and reducing your pot belly. Remember, they're only small individual things. Try not to get that overwhelm. You've got one day you can focus on at a time. Get your body upgraded 
one day at a time. I hope this has been useful for you.